Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. This looks a little bit different, doesn't it now? Yes, Point 22 has got a launcher, a, a new dedicated launcher, which includes all the social media links and, uh, Play KSP.22 now, and a t-shirt, merchandise thingy, spaceport, and news, and settings. And if we go into settings, we get all the in-game settings outside of the game, which is nice. And we also get this advanced tab, which is new, which is new. This wasn't in the Point .21 game or previously. A few different things. Do not activate any of these settings unless you know what you're doing. Run in a frameless window. This... This is a prayer, this is the answering to my prayer that I have not said in any video ever, but I've been subconsciously wishing. Frameless window, you have no idea how hard it is or how annoying it is to record in a good full screen resolution without this option. Frameless window, every single game developer right now, if you're watching this, make this an option. And thank you very much squad for making it an option. Yes. Now, without further ado, let us get on with the video at hand. I am going to be playing Kerbal Space Program Career Mode, and presumably I press play to do this. Ooh. Do you want to allow the phone program? Yes, 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 yes. Let me play. Let me play. Is it... Oh, there we go. Yes, hello and welcome to Half Plays Kerbal Space Program in a borderless window. Which is so nice, and I'm going to start the game. I'm going to start a game. That's probably the best way to get playing this. The flag will be the Union Jeb, my flag, which no one else can have. Uh, my username is in fact Hot Gaming. Uh, or we could make this official if we wanted to. Ah, there. Oh no, hang on. There. There we go. In career mode, you have to manage all aspects of your space program. Note this mode is still in development. It is. This is in fact a pre-release version of the game still, although it's practically released, seeing as the game is supposed to be released today. It could have been released right now and I have no idea about it. But here we go. I wonder how this frameless border thing will affect performance. Ooh, okay. This is nice and smooth. Smoother, at least. Uh, yes, let's get going. So, for those of you who haven't seen my overview and don't know what the big thing with Point Two Two is, it is career mode, and specifically it is research and development. Meaning that you start off with very, very, or tier zero of the parts list, and you are very limited in terms of your parts. Now, to progress to the first tier, which gives you the real, proper spacefaring parts for the first time, uh, you can simply just take this onto the launch pad and do a crew report, sadly. Uh, but I don't think that's in the spirit of adventure, really, so... We're not going to be doing that today, no sorry. We are going to be trying to achieve orbit. Yes, I know. Isn't he crazy, says the audience, trying to achieve orbit on the first flight with only this tier. I've landed on the moon with this tier. Yes, I've been playing career mode. I, I've had pre-release uh, access due to the KSP media group. And uh, that's how I made the overview video for those of you who were wondering. Uh, but yes, I've landed on the moon using this tier of parts. It wasn't easy. Uh, the 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 hard part of it isn't the actual fuel restrictions or the lack of decoupling. No, there are ways around that. The hard part, the hard part is the lack of direction, the lack of control of your trajectory. Uh, so let's not be too let's not be too confident about me achieving moon landing first time after several build iterations and not having played the game for a few days. So, you know, but we'll see. Uh, if I remember, we should be able to use something like this. Now, you may have seen me briefly go through these parts and gone, hang on, hang on, where are your decouplers? No, no decouplers, no decouplers whatsoever. Well, how are you going to build a staged rocket, or is it going to be an SSTO? No, it's going to be staged, but we're going to use a bit more of an explosive uh, decoupling method than the norm, perhaps. Go on, it works. I swear it works. I've done it. I've done it before. It works. Usually. Okay, the safety rating on this particular design probably isn't particularly high. I wouldn't know. It's never been tested. Um, this is actually slightly different to the one I've used before. But I'm sure it'll all be absolutely fine and dandy and other such words that have no relevant context in this conversation. Uh, we'll place that there. This conversation. This is a two-way conversation, apparently. Let's call this, uh... Yeah, how about this? 
leading the Cradle Mark 1. That sounds like a good model name for a rocket. Um, how about this? Don't worry. It will all be over soon. There we go. Just a bit of foreboding in there. Foreboding. Foreboding. Interesting. Let's check our Ashken groups. Uh, we don't need action groups. Let's check our... Yes! Jebediah Kerman! What could go right with Jebediah Kerman on board? Not an awful lot. Sad to say. Uh, let's load onto the pad and take a look at this newly built world for 0 0.22. Biomes, biomes. Kerbin has biomes. Different biomes and <laughs> things. Made up of, uh, of coastline, of grassland, of desert, of mountains, of polar ice caps, and not much else. I think there's seven biomes in total. Something like that. Anyway, let's get on with this. So the idea behind the explosive decoupling method is to actually blow up the engines below you before they run out of fuel. And uh, we're about to test this theory right now. So I don't want to be running my engine at full capacity, just about here to give us some control authority. And we want to be going mainly up. Now, okay, we want to be going mainly up. Hopefully, mainly up. Uh, let's make a crew report, keep that. There we go. You know, this kind of attitude isn't perfect, but uh, trust me, I've had far worse flights in this game, okay, in this update. Okay, and we're going to blow... Damn it, we did it too late. Okay, we need to abort. Press the abort button. Uh, there is no abort button. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's the first time it's managed to solve itself out of that. Oh, wow, we might actually be able to make this... Probably not into an orbit. We are pointing way too far over for an orbit. But we might be able to get somewhere. I'm trying to pull back up. But we don't seem to want to do it. Start the engines, explode them. Now we should be able to pull back up. Excellent. Okay. It's just having that bit too much mass makes having the single gyro in the command module do all the work a bit impractical. And, oh, it's refusing. It's, no, no, it doesn't like this. Oh, dearie me. Okay. Okay, we're not going to make it into orbit. <laughs> what do you mean you already knew that? As if this flight path isn't optimal. Come on now, be reasonable. Now this is odd, it's really, really straining against me now. I mean, we do have quite a lot of... Okay, we didn't have an awful lot of, an awful lot of vertical velocity anymore, because we have kind of lost it all by not burning the, en the engines in the right direction. But we had... We had something wonderful whilst it lasted. Now, if we can at least get a suborbital hop, I'll be happy with a suborbital hop, you know? I'll settle for that. Everything will be fine and dandy if I can just point this the right way. Okay, let's have a look. We are... Our inclination is southern. Slightly southern. Uh, I'm not going to bother wasting a fuel to try and correct this. I don't think it's really a good use of fuel. We're just going to go into a slightly inclined orbit. So, push ourselves over here. And yeah, I did say orbit because I'm suddenly a bit more confident about those chances. The chance of orbit. Uh, if we can make another crew report, or will it overwrite? Yes, it'll overwrite. Okay, we don't want to do that. We want to keep our science. 59 kilometer apoapsis, or apo key, depending on your use of terminology, your preference. Uh, what can we do? Are there any other experiments we can do? Um, we could do an EVA report. <laughs> yes, we could do an EVA report if we wanted to. Doing it right now with the engine burning probably wouldn't be such a good idea. But uh, Jebediah Kerman has an open mind, you know? And that is out of the atmosphere, so I'm not going to take my chances. I'm not going to go any higher than this. But now, now the engine is not burning, we can do an, I an EVA report. In fact, IVA, I'd like to look out at IVA. Uh, okay, EVA report. You're starting to feel you should really get back in the ship. Maybe. Report from Kerbin's upper atmosphere. Keep data and board. That has now been stored in the command pod. And we still have an eye, a high enough apple access. The problem, of course, is that we're looking along these boosters because we don't have any... Uh, we have no radial decouplers in order to attach them with. Or detach them, more importantly. Attaching is not a problem. 
Let's just use some physics warp. Ah, uh, don't show don't show me this again. I'm a veteran. Veteran of the game. Nearly been playing for three years. People have been saying what I should do through a three year KSP special. Um I, I can't remember what the suggestions were, but if you have any suggestions, then you can of course post in the comments. I couldn't possibly dream of stopping you. Alright, let's get this thing aligned properly. So we are 15 seconds away, probably about time to start burning. I don't think we're going to get into a full circuit orbit, but we should be able to raise our periapsis, you know, maybe off the ground. Maybe. Oh, that is a wonderful inclination, isn't it? Very beautiful. <coughs> Fuel, 30 units. Oh, hang on. Hey, we might be able to get to orbit with this. Yeah. And we are in orbit, because I can time warp straight away to five times acceleration. So let's just get right on our apoapsis. Four seconds. Three, two, one. Start burning again. Okay, we want to burn prograde. And we're in orbit! We are in orbit, and we have plenty of fuel left. We could even boost our altitude a little. But excellent, we're in orbit, right. There we go, and the camera shifts, just to confirm that. Let's take a quick look inside our command pod here. Ah, look at it. Kerbin. Quite a weird angle, but it does look quite nice. In fact, that could be a thumbnail. Um, I could put it here. I could do that. It wouldn't be a particularly interesting thumbnail. But it could be one. There we go. Right, let's do an EVA then. Uh, where's the key? F2 and then C to come back out. EVA. We're not getting the music because we are a bit too low for that. In fact, let me just... Um, uh, we're going to board. We're going to board. We're going to time warp to get the music. Give us music. Go on, I paid good money for good money for the music in this game. Start. Commence. As you may. For my black belt training. Yes, there it is in the background. Wonderful, nice little soft music. None of you can hear because I'm talking over it. But you know, I can appreciate it nonetheless. We're on the dark side of Kerbin now. The dark side of the planet. Also known as nighttime. And we'll make our EVA report. You've recorded your observations about the situation. Keep data. And that's quite good for a first trip. That is not going... That's not bad whatsoever. Let's grab. Get in. And we've saved an EVA report from space just above Kerbin's grasslands. I wonder, if we take a report above the ocean, will it give us a different thing? Uh, about here. We're only going to do one orbit, we are going to de-orbit straight after this. Okay, let's do an EVA now. We are definitely over the ocean. Let go, come over here. EVA report. You've recorded your observations about the situation. About, about the situation, indeed. From space, just above Kerbin's water. Nice. So we're actually just farming science at the moment by doing this. Hey, this wasn't bad, was it? For a first episode, straight into the orbit. Not bad at all. The only the only slight downside was my sloppy inclination. But, you know, I put that down to the parts, really. Lack of control, as I've already said. Okay, uh, let's see about... Ooh, let's take, a, let's take a report over the desert. And then we shall begin our retrograde burn. It may be a bit too late now, actually. But I was hoping to be able to hit the space center. But you never know, we might still manage it. So... EVA report. One final time. Pose for the camera jab. Looking nice. That's a nice thumbnail. I'm more concerned about the thumbnails than the actual mission. This is when you know things go horribly wrong. Let's take this report. Recorded your observations. Again, eight. Science hasn't gone down in value. Therefore, I can deduce that we have, in fact, just taken a report over the desert. There we go, Kubin's Mountains. No, not the desert. Ah, got me with that one, game. Well done. Right, enough of this nonsense. Let's get back down to Kerbin. This was uh, Yuri Kerbin, the first Kerbal in space in this universe. You never get that in the newspapers, do you? The scientific journals, when they publish, Scientists have landed men on the moon. The first man on the moon was Neil Kerman in this universe. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be great if that just happened in real life. In this universe, it was uh, Neil Armstrong. 
but you know, there, there are probably plenty of other universes in this multiverse that we exist in, so we're not going to say that he was the first human. Hey, it could have been British astronauts uh, in 1939, uh, a design by the British Interplanetary Society, of which I am a member. <clears throat> the British Interplanetary Society came up with a fairly decent, probably would have worked if technology had been slightly more advanced. Certainly not necessary to have gone all or waited till 1969. 1939, was it 39 or 35? Something like that. The British Planetary Society put forward a design spec for a moon lander, and it was actually uh, practical as well. It wasn't, it wasn't remotely insane. So yeah, the British could have been first on the moon in one of the multiverses or one of the universes in our multiverse. And if you want to have a mug, you can you can get a mug from the BIS store uh, with that precise cartoon on it. It's just uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin being surprised by a 1939 British space lander. Anyway, here's our re-entry. Here's our re-entry. Coming down, screaming over the mountains. Let's just... In fact, we just pull up a little and burn. Ah, forget it, we don't need to burn. Uh, we probably should save our fuel for when we actually open up parachute. Hmm, there's a thought. Ooh, but we are near water. We can probably take a sample of fresh water. This lake, these lakes ought to be freshwater, right? That's how it works. Yeah, okay. We'll try doing that, because I haven't been able to do that in the game yet, or I haven't tried, more importantly. Okay, let's... Burn an open parachute. Okay. Crap. Please, please don't let us crash here. I really don't want to crash. Really don't want to crash. Yes! Oh, the parachute took the strain. I was thinking that the entire parachute line was going to break and everything was going to go horribly wrong. We came close that time, didn't we? Okay. Let's land this thing. Now, hopefully the fuel tanks will act as a cushion for the command pod. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Now, we have no way of getting back into the command pod unless I can just, like, roll it over. Yeah. Okay, it's not safe to get out now. It's not safe to get out of the command pod because we wouldn't be able to get back in. Oh, well, that's a shame. Oh, well, we've been into orbit. We can't really be disappointed by not being being able to sample the grass. So, yes, that was episode one of Hot Gaming Go Harv Plays Kerbal Space Program Career Mode, in which, well, I played Kerbal Space Program. Uh, let's just do one final EVA and just stand here. This is a most precarious situation. I agree. But it's worth 5.6 uh, science value, so I really don't care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you liked this video, please do like this video. More episodes of Career Mode coming in the future. We'll be spending this ill-gotten, or not exactly ill-gotten, this, this hard-earned scientific knowledge. Uh, somehow we're going to turn all this scientific knowledge into boosters and decouplers, I expect. Hey, we, we researched how boosters react to exploding, and that is definitely the way forward in terms of uh, decoupler engineering. So, thank you again for watching, and I shall see you all next time.